I don't think this image is worth five grand, but either way, I'm going to be showing you how to recreate it in Blender. First thing I'm going to do is add in a plane, so Shift A, Mesh Plane, and then scale it up. And I was in wireframe mode, I'm going to switch to solid view mode, and then just duplicate that, move it up. Now, the idea here is that this will be our rain so our rain will be falling from here and then this will be the actual water surface that our puddles will appear on this is leo torres's method i believe that's how you pronounce his name now i will create the dynamic paint which we will be using now if you think about like a paint brush right you have the brush itself and then you have the canvas that you're actually painting onto now the canvas is like where your paint is sort of gonna gonna show up on, right? Um, it's the area that you're painting on, while the brush is like where the paint is coming from, so to speak. Another way to think about it is if you're familiar with fluid simulations or smoke simulations, this will be our inflow, and then this will be our domain. So what will actually be affected by the simulation and then this is where the simulation is kind of coming from now in paintbrush terms going back to our paintbrush analogy that actually applies to this dynamic paint so if we click dynamic paint here you can see there's a canvas and there's a brush in this drop down um, as i said the canvas is where our where our paint will appear on and then the brush is like what is causing our paint to appear there. If it doesn't make sense right now, I'll get into it a little bit more as we actually run the simulation. But this will be our canvas, as I said. So if we just click Add Canvas here, another thing we're going to want to add is a collision, because otherwise the rain won't actually hit the surface. Next, we want to uh, set this uh, surface type to Waves. And then we can click on the top plane and then uh, add a dynamic paint to this one as well. And then this will be our brush, add brush. And then uh, we want to set this to particle system. We haven't actually added that particle system yet. This will be the rain itself, right? So if we go into the particle settings, click the plus there. And then the defaults are fine for now, uh, other than uh, this, which will set to zero. Um, now if we run this, uh, you can see that nothing is really happening. We first need to, like I said, set the particle system. And then, and then one other thing we need to do, there's not enough geometry on this. So if we subdivide and change the number of cuts to 50, and then go back into object mode, now you can see that uh, something is happening. It's, it's actually like digging into the surface. So this is kind of uh, this is kind of the basis uh, what we'll be what we'll be working off of for the this first part here, actually setting up the scene. So right now it doesn't look very good, and that's partially because we don't have enough geometry still. Um, we can add another subdivision, and then from from my testing two was fine. There is one issue you're going to want to make sure that your viewport is the same as your render and i'll sort of get into the why um, later on so right now you can see it looks better it looks much better with just that subdivision added um, but you can see it, it's kind of more like ocean waves than actual like puddle ripples like we see in our reference the main factor in this is the damping setting on the canvas. Uh, so in the dynamic paint settings, the damping, you can set that to 0.3 or something around there. And now it looks much more like, um, like, you know, rain coming down on like a lake or a river. The next thing I'm going to do is add in a camera. I don't have a numpad, so I'm just going to go to view, align, view, uh, align active camera to view. And that'll actually just bring my um, camera right here. I'm going to increase the focal length a little bit. And I'm going to 
I'm gonna set this to about 1,300 because our because our reference is not 1920 by 1080 uh, in terms of its aspect ratio. So if I uncheck that to make sure that the camera doesn't move as I move my camera around. If we go into the render view, obviously we don't have our lighting set up, but we don't have our material set up either. We're gonna, so if we go to the materials tab and then uh, click new here, actually we wanna go to the shading tab here. Um, there is a trick here and it's kind of weird. Um, it's not subtract, it's mix RGB and then set this to subtract and then plug that in. You wanna set this to black. This is just what I found gave the best results. And then set this to blue. Now you can get some pretty interesting results this way. I'm gonna set my cycles, my render engine to cycles and my device to GPU compute. Now um, you can get some pretty interesting results this way. You probably also wanna set the roughness to zero the specular, the uh, it'll depend on like what your exposure is and what your environment light strength is. Now, generally speaking, your roughness should be zero, and your base color here should be black. I have seen some water shaders that have a little bit of metallic. It sort of works. I'm just gonna go with zero for now. Now, the reason why we set this to blue is because we're subtracting, right? So we can get some pretty interesting uh, colors this way on the water. Um, this is a little bit glitchy. I have encountered some weirdness. Like, you can see as I move the camera, like it, it stops um, sort of rendering out that material and then, um, and then it just shows like uh, the solid black and then and then when I stop moving the camera it renders this out I don't know what's going on there right now it's kind of bland and it's like all like dark and and that's because we don't have our environment light I generally use HDR sky texture can work uh, this sky texture here but for this I'm gonna use an HDR because I found one that works pretty well I think It's this Crystals Fall one, which I will link in the description. Now, um, right now it still doesn't look right. We can increase the exposure here, uh, or we can increase the uh, environment light. For my testing, I just used 13, and then, and then set this accordingly. We can see it's kind of, we see like this square kind of going around here. Um, and it's like all blue in that spot and then it's more red on the outside. We should hide the emitter. So if we go into the particle settings here, and it's kind of weird the way they've laid this out. We have this viewport display and then we have the render. Show emitter basically does the exact same thing except this one's for the render, this one's for the viewport. And now you can see that problem is fixed. You probably want to crank down the factor on here to something like 0 0.003. You can set your specular accordingly to what your exposure and your environment light is. And with that, we're pretty much done with our material setup. Pretty much what we need to do now is set up our particle system to be a little bit better. Uh, 2500 might be a little bit too much, but um, you know, just play around with, uh, with the particle settings a little bit to get something that you like. If you, if you put too much, too many, then you'll, you'll start to see that sort of ocean wave issue that we had before 2500. Um, probably too much for this for this size like because as you increase the size you'll want to increase the number of particles as well because uh, if you have more particles um, but a smaller size then it'll be like too many but if you have the same number of particles but you have a larger size then it might be 
um, like it might be enough or even um, not enough for that matter. I mentioned earlier that your viewport subdivision should be the same as your render subdivision. Let me find a better frame to sort of illustrate that a little bit. Um, okay, I think that one's fine. Yeah, so now you can see these uh, puddles here. If I set this render subdivision to three and then render, you can see that the puddles are completely gone. So if you're experiencing that, make sure that you set that to the same number and then just run the simulation again and then it should be fine. So you can see how like part of the water is red and then part of it is black. We want to try to recreate that, so um, you can leave the material as is, although you may want to play with the factor a little bit. I actually think 0 0.05 or 0.1 even might be better, um, but you want to add a light, kind of like a point light should be fine, and then increase the size a little bit, and then increase the um, power. And then you can go Alt D to duplicate it, but keeping the same like uh, keeping the same object data. So like when you change one of them, the other ones uh, will change. So if we set the color to red, you can see that it sort of becomes more like integrated into the environment. Now before we proceed, we're gonna want to make sure that we have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. So just search up Node Wrangler and tick that checkbox. The main node that we're going to use in this compositing is RGB curves to sort of bring down the shadows a little bit. Now if we Control shift click on that, we'll see our final image in the back there. You might be too far zoomed in, but you can press Alt-V to zoom in and then V to zoom out. So as you can see, uh, if we sort of bring that down, you can see how like the areas that aren't so bright are sort of becoming like kind of more desaturated. Uh, and that's the main effect that we see in our reference. And from here, we're at pretty close to done. We can add some other stuff if we want to. Like I've found that glare can sometimes work depending on uh, what your scene sort of looks like. And of course there are some other things that you can do, like if you wanted to isolate the sort of red parts, what you can do is uh, go brightness contrast, and then if you plug that into the image, uh, as you increase the contrast and then decrease the brightness a little bit, see how that is kind of um, bringing out the sort of the areas that are more lit and then you can blur that because it's kind of it's kind of a lot uh, it's kind of really like sharp right now and it's and it's too like contrasty you know so if you blur it um, maybe not 80 maybe 20 <clears throat> that um, it could it could work in some cases and you can use this as like a factor for like a mix if you want to the idea of a factor, by the way, is like where in the image that you want the um, that you want the mix to affect. So, like the mix node itself is pretty simple. You're basically blending the output image from here into this like flat red color in in this case. But you can, of course, plug an image into there, and you know we get the same idea, right? I, I certainly found compositing and shading to be a little bit confusing um, when I first started Blender. I'm going to remove that because it kind of makes it look weird in my case. And there's pretty much the final image. Thank you very much for watching.